go to the next one. Watch this, guys. Okay, so I gotta tell you a true story. This is a true story. I was about 18 or 19 years old, and at the and at the university, um, back at home. And I don't know if they do this here, but it's terrible. But when you get in the university, they give you they give you a charge card with money. I was 18 years old with credit card. I was like, woo! I was like, clothes. I'm gonna go get a whole bunch of clothes. I was dating at the time, so we got the matching clothes because we was going to the university. I wanted them to know that we were together. So, <laughs> so I made sure we looked just alike. Like, this is, she's with me, I'm with her. And we have different classes, but we're dressed alike. So don't talk to her. She's with me. And so I'll never forget, she was excited. We went to the store, the mall. We bought all kinds of stuff. We had maybe like, I don't know, $2,000, $3,000. And I just bought watches alike. Just, 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 just everything. And I'll never forget, I got to the counter and I was so, it's the first major purchase ever. This is $3,000 in clothes. I had never spent that kind of money before. And I just remember giving the lady the card, like, oh my God. Because you know, when you're young, they're kind of looking at you like, you don't have that kind of money. I was like, damn. <laughs> Bring this up right here. Take it all of this. She rang it up. Ah, Mr. Sergeant, sir, can you come here? She was nice. She didn't want to say it in front of my girlfriend at the time. So I went over to her. I was like, yes, ma'am, what's the problem? She said, it was decline. I was like, decline. Try one more time. This time, just wipe the bed. Wipe it. Just wipe that way. Go slow. Don't go quick. Go slow. So she swiped it the second time. I was like, come on. This time, my wife, my little girlfriend at the time, she's like, is everything OK? I'm like, it's fine. It's OK. Don't worry about it. But we need to put this stuff back. Don't put it back. It's going to be OK. So we go, and she's like, it's decline. It's OK. It's a huge favor. Can you tell me like the number? Like what does it say? Why is it declined? And what I found out was I was supposed to call that little number on the card. So my first one, I didn't know. I was just ready to swipe. I didn't know. But I found out you had to. Come on, I need a little bit more energy. You had to. So the money was there. The money was there. There was one step I had to activate. I ran to the payphone, called, activated. She ran through. I was like, whoo. Because <laughs> I've been married to that young lady for 25 years now. That one shopping experience could have just everything. <laughs> it could have altered everything. She's like, you broke, you don't have any money. I'm not dating you, but the card saved my five. Once I activated, I mean, she's been spending my money ever since that time. Somebody should have told me I got tricked, right? So I need you to do me a huge favor, right? So before we go here, I just need this side quickly. Let's just be honest, because when we're transparent, it's going to help us get to the next level. Can two people just be honest and say, ET, this is why I have not fully activated my gifts and my talent. They're there. This is why I haven't done it. I'm scared of the result that I'm scared of failing. Good. I'm afraid of the results that I might get. If I put in 120%, and it still doesn't work out, right? But I'm saying, we know if we put 70% in, we put 80% in, when she's trying to take over the South Coast, when he's trying to take over the West Coast, and we put 70% in, what's going to happen, guys? You're going to fail anyway. Right? We, you're going to fail anyway. So if we put in 70, try to play it safe, we fail anyway. At least if we just put 120. And listen to me closely. If you listen to my album, you would hear on my album say, the reason why it took me an extra two years to get the PhD is because I've never been a good writer, and I was afraid that I would do all that writing for an entire year, and they would fail me. So it took me two years to get the courage. ET. Took me two years to get the courage to just say, you know what, it's time to just, it's time to face my fears. And can I be honest with you guys? What's on the other side of fear? What's on the other side of fear is greater than that feeling that you get when you were afraid. When I got on the other side of that degree, I don't forget the guy called me and was like, ET, okay, it's almost that time. It's been six months. I'm ready for you to come to speak to the company again. We got a standard contract. And we're just going to send it to you. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. We're not doing this. We can't do the standing contract. He said, what do you mean we can't do the standing contract? We've been doing the standing contract for the last three years. I said, oh, something's changed. He says, no, nothing's changed. It's the same group of people. The scope of the responsibility has changed. Nothing has changed. I said, oh, yeah, something's changed. I'm going to need an extra 20000 He said, you're going to need an extra 20000 for what, Eric? You're doing the exact same thing. Nothing has changed. I said, it has. I have a PhD now. <laughs> something's changed. 
extra, listen to what I told you, an extra 20,000. And the doors in the states that have opened to me are some doors that only open when you have your PhD. Now, I'm not, now you don't see all the stuff, Eric, Dr. Thomas, I'm not into that. But I am into using it for the, when it's time for the check. I'm into using it for that time. I don't bring it out any other time when we start negotiating. I'm like, life happened to tell you. It was happening in May. I don't know if you got the memo or not. I know it was May wasn't that long ago. But I'm Dr. Eric Thomas now. I need an additional plus an author. I wrote three books. I don't, did you see me on Fox News? I'm working with Fox now. I just want to put that in there. I'm sorry. Extra 20, please. What if I would have stopped? What if I would have let my fear stop me from trying? So my new thing is, you're going to fail anyway, so, so at least die trying. Right? Okay, so you're in the room with me, and this, this is our story. You weren't brave enough to raise your hand. We had to be transparent. But if it applies to you, and you need to say to yourself, my fear is no longer going to stop me. I will die trying. I will not, I will not be stopped before I try. That will not be my reality anymore. I will not allow myself to fail when I'm not even put forth effort. I will die trying. If that's you in this room and you want to you, you wanna go with us and make that commitment to yourself, I just need you to raise your hand. I'm going to die trying. Yep, good hands down. I love it. All right. I need one other person to be transparent. What's stopping you? All the skill. What's stopping you? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm Josh from Web Developer. Like, Everyone says, you know, oh, you're going to do it, you're, you're, I'm only 18, going to be a millionaire by 21, but it's like, I just can't take that right now, so it's like, just trying to put in all the effort I can, but it's like, that's not one roadblock that I'm just working on right now. Good, and say that roadblock again, help me to understand. So, there's the success that everyone else is like, Josh, you're going to make it, mm -hmm. everyone else believes in me, but I need to believe in myself. Good. A little bit more, so. Good, I love it. No, 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 no more, no more. So, we're talking one the responsibility that comes with being successful. And it's responsibility. I had a friend call me the Eric, our little small college is going under. I need $120,000 to keep it from going under. Like, that's a lot of responsibility. Right? And that's what I was afraid of. You know, I was afraid of, now I have to say no in ways I've never had to say no before. There's a lot of responsibility of people that ask me to do things. And, and, and I buckle under the responsibility. Once I become Dr. Thomas, listen to me. And I, I'm just going to be honest. I'm not with you guys long enough, but for those of you who listen, you know, the videos or whatever. When you become doctor, that's a different critique. Prior to doctor, you can say words however you want to say them. Nobody's going to say anything to you. But once you become doctor, and like I never forget, once doctor status happened, and I started posting on Instagram, Eric, that's, you missed the video. Like, nobody really was on grammar before I got the doctor. <laughs> once I got the doctor, you're like, doctors don't write like that. <laughs> Eric, do you, who's writing here? Is that you or someone else? Right? There was a level of critique, responsibility. There was a level of critique I didn't have when I was a high school dropout. Nobody expected anything of me before I became an author, before I became a doctor, before I started traveling the world. Nobody had any expectation. Not every time I get up back at home, everybody's a critic. It's why well, I've gone to another level. And a part of me not wanting to get my doctor, a part of that was I prefer to be the baseball cap, the jeans guy, the gym shoe. Like, I like that guy. I don't like the guy that, you know, people want to just critique everything I do. But that was just, that's a part of it. So, so if you're going to get the extra $20,000, if you're going to get the talk show opportunities, if, 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 if certain things are going to happen for you, then you're going to have to deal with the responsibility. Now, here, here's the question that, I have to ask, that you have to ask yourself. What happens if you let that stop you? Like, who are the people in your life whose lives will never be what they ought to be? Come on, come on. Guys, okay, let me just say this and we'll go to the next slide. This thing is deep. The most important thing happened to me when I got my PhD. Outside of my mother being there when I defended successfully, when I walked out of that room, my son said to me, Dad, if I ever decide to get a doctorate degree, I watched you and I know how to do it now. Like where I come from, my parents, we know they work. We, we don't have generations of wealth. So when my son walked out, what he was saying is, Dad, generations of wealth. I know how you do it. I've watched you, Dad. I see exactly how you do it. I know how to do it. So, so the responsibility was tough, but now my son knows exactly. He sees the blueprint. He knows exactly what I, he knows exactly what I did. And he feels he can do it because like, that's my dad. If my dad can do it, I can do it. So who would you be letting down? Who, who, who would you hurt if you decided not to bear the weight and the responsibility until you were 35? Like between now and 35, Whose lives would not be changed and touched if I waited until I had a doctorate degree to do YouTube work? 
So listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. I need you to ask yourself this question. Why have I not activated it? What's the problem? All right, one or two more people, help me out because I need the people to feel like they're not by themselves. One or two other people, please, quickly. Yes, ma'am. Lazy. Lazy. Yeah. We hate to say that, all right? I don't even want to repeat it because you're like, he's calling me lazy. She said that I didn't say it. But how many of us in this room are just not willing to, just not willing to just to get up at 3 o'clock. You're not willing to get up at 4 o'clock. How many of you just raise your hand? You're just not willing to put in the long hours. All right, so I want to do you a favor. I want to do you a quick favor. People say, E.T., how did you make this shift? I made this shift when I realized in life there are things that are not important, somewhat important, very important in an emergency. Come on, listen to me. An emergency. I realize as humans we operate differently when we think something is an emergency. Whether it's an emergency or not, if you can make yourself believe it's an emergency, you operate differently. So not important is my son calling me in high school and saying, Dad, I left my lunch at home. Well, that's not important. I'm not about to stop my whole day to bring your lunch. It's not important. Somewhat important, my daughter calls me. And say, Dad, I left my homework at home. Can you bring it to school for me? Or I'm going to get a bad grade. That's somewhat important. Somewhat important means if I don't have anything else to do, I can do that for you. Very important is my wife's to-do list when she leaves and goes to work. And not <laughs> she get home. Very, very important. Right? And it's very, very important because my wife, depending on if I did 80 or 90 or 50%, She's going to change the emotional atmosphere when she walks in the house. So, so if I didn't do what she asked me to do when she comes home, it's going to be a totally different environment, right? But if I do 100% of what she asked me for, she's going to come in. It's going to be a great night, God. Y'all kids, go to bed. Everybody, go to bed. So listen to me very, very closely, guys. So, so, so then, 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 then emergency is when that company calls me and says, Eric, you forgot to put the proper number in so we could get you your check. So I stop everything I'm doing and pull out the right number. I'm like, what's the wrong number? Find the right number, get that right number in. Listen to me, I don't even ask anybody to fax it for me. I do it myself. I don't want any mistakes. Why? That is an emergency. And when we have an emergency in our lives, and so what I had to do to get out of being lazy is I had to make up emergencies. 